nice um, rug here from is, Fiji on the wall. Is that a tapestry? Yeah. Um, I don't. Beautiful. I think it used to be. What's a tapestry? It's like a rug from medieval times. Very expensive. Very nice. Very nice. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Tapestry. <laughs> What's up, ladies and gentlemen? What's going on? It's your boy, Dan. I got my boy, Brandon, on Ask the Zen Dudes, episode number 18B. How? <laughs> what? I don't know. What's going on, Zen Dude Nation? I'm excited for Ask the Zen Dudes. It feels like it's been at least a week. What's it been, a week? I think it's been about a week. <laughs> it's been about a, a week. week. Too long, if you ask me. I agree. I agree, my friend. Where are you right now? I am in Eugene, Oregon. Dude, you know what I've noticed about the U.S.? We haven't talked about this. Dude, living in small-town U.S. is actually super cheap. Yeah. Like, we're looking at groceries and how much, like, a bunch of random stuff costs, compared to Columbia, I used to think Columbia was, like, really, really cheap. And now I'm grocery shopping. I'm like, I think I would spend the same amount here as I would in Columbia. Yeah, man. Like, a box of cereal is, like, $1.50 or $2. I'm like... What's going on here? That's awesome. Maybe we'll find that in LA, dude. I hope we find some like off the beaten path grocery stores that we can just. Yeah, I mean, we got to go to. Um, <clears throat> there's some. There's definitely some like low income uh, grocery stores that we should hit up that have like you know you get a bunch of deli meat, a bunch of turkey breasts, like a pound for like three ninety nine. Places like that. I'm, I want to do that. Yeah, I want to do that too. Because I actually, I like buying groceries when the food is delicious and I feel like it's it's like pretty fresh. And yeah. A lot of times I didn't buy stuff, groceries in Columbia because it was shipped from the U.S. And I was like, ah, it's way more expensive. Yeah. And I don't want this as much because it. Dude, I agree, man. You walk into some grocery stores here and I just started, I picked up an apple, you know, and it's so like. I do agree the quality that I've noticed with some of the food here in grocery stores is just really high, which is cool. So I'm yeah, excited. dude. Also, people live in fucking mansions here in what? the in oh, U.S. And you, yeah, yeah, yeah. For dude, the houses compared, yeah, of course, it's so they're so big. They're so big. I'm just, we're, so we were living around just apartments for so long. Everyone has had like this little space himself, and here, like these people, they think they're middle class. They're just kings and queens. Yeah. Kings and queens living in these mansions. I mean, like, you know, it, of course, there's there's people on different levels, but, like, comparatively, when you look at the middle class here versus the middle class there, it's just night and day. For sure. For sure. So, That's crazy. Nothing to do with House of Zen Dudes, but um, I wanted to tell you about this, and we just happened to start recording, so, um, you know. I think everyone wanted to know that, so it's fine. Yeah. Be grateful. Be grateful for uh, where you are because you have it better than someone. Absolutely. That is a very true statement. Starting with the dojo, Nathan, how you doing, brother? I'm doing the thing every day, and I think I don't do my push-ups correctly. In fact, I have pain in the top of my left shoulder. It's unbearable, but it's kind of a, it's bearable, but it's kind of annoying for my boxing training. What is your push-up position? Thanks for everything, Dan and Bran. I can't wait to meet you and go to Skipping Ropes and have some beers with both my coaches. Take care of that. We're going to do that, bro. It's going to be yeah, awesome. Play it's going to be awesome. Yeah, um, man. All right. Um, what's your push-up well, one, I guess? To, well, two things. If he, if this dude, he's in the dojo. So, my man, you have tutorials. We have exercise demos actually showing you the exact form that you should be doing. So, get into the coaching portal and go to the jump, and go to the push-up uh, demonstrations and watch them because we show you exactly how to do it. But I'll just say really quickly for here, for anyone who doesn't have access to those demonstrations, it's just important to keep your shoulders down away from your ears and then bring your elbows in. Okay. A lot of people like hurt their shoulders cause like they're like scrunched up here and they have their elbows out to the side and it just puts a lot of extra stress on the joints. So my quick recommendation would be like shoulders down, elbows in, you know, make it more of a, a tricep heavy exercise and protect those shoulders. Brandon, I think that was a very good and sufficient answer. Moving on, Sophie asks, if you couldn't, I like this question, if you couldn't jump rope for some reason, what would be your second choice for cardio and why? Hmm. 
boxing, I probably work the bag, you know? I just do all kind of boxing training because... Because I want to feel like I'm doing something. I'm kind of like getting better at a skill. Mm-hmm. And I know what you're going to say, Dan. Dude, know. it's dancing. Dancing. That is my secondary cardio mm-hmm. session. Like I just move my body for like 45 minutes and dance until I can't anymore. So that would be my answer. Shay, what's up, dude? Asks, are pull-up negatives supposed to hurt or should I begin with dead hangs? Oh, they're supposed to hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Pulled negatives are super painful because... Like, you can't even do one push-up, and we're forcing you into the, or sorry, one pull-up, and we're forcing you into the pull-up position up here, and then you're letting your body down, so it's like, that kind of eccentric contraction is going to be painful, but also going to lead to some gains. Yeah, and painful in a good way. Like, if your shoulders are, like, really hurting, and they feel like you have pain in the the joint, like sharpshooting pain, then you wouldn't want to be, you probably would you don't even want to be doing dead hangs, if that's the case, so... Depend, depending on what kind of pain you're talking about, be careful with that. If it's just like Brandon's talking about, like it's hard and it hurts your muscles, that's totally fine, dude. Um, dead hangs, however, to, to answer your question, dead hangs are good. I think they're, I think dead hangs are good. Um, so I would start with that if you feel more comfortable and then work your way into negatives. But if you just think negatives are hard and that's why you're avoiding them, don't do that. Do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and also, all the people are in the dojo. You have access to all these exercise tutorials. So, literally, the way Dan and I learn things is by watching other people do it correctly and then doing it ourselves. So, like, watch the demonstrations and then maybe even take a video of yourself from behind and see how you can, like, adjust your form so it looks like how we're doing pull-ups. Because, like, we found we're doing it in a way that's not going to lead to any injury. So, if you can replicate our form, you're going to be good, man. For shout, Ashwin asks... I've been hitting my macros for the last couple of weeks, and I've lost around 4.5 pounds, parentheses. Is that water weight? How will I know when it's time to change up the macros? The ZDF calculator doesn't change my numbers much until I reduce my weight by around 9 to 10 pounds. If, on the other hand, my weight loss stalls for a couple of weeks, is that a sign to change up, or should I give it more time, like a month? Mm. You mean to take a stab at right. this one? You want to do it? You want me to? I'm happy either way. Dude, I'll just I'll take I'll take a quick stab because I was yeah, a lot. Get in there. And yeah, so it's there. not right, it's not like right in front of you. Actually, my dude. Um, first of all, the thing I always say to people, and I'm not I'm not saying that you're not doing this, but really, when you say hitting your calories and macros, <clears> you <throat> promise me absolutely that you're actually hitting like you're hitting those macros every single day, and it looks like you kind of are because I see you like doing the food prepping and whatnot in the dojo. Good stuff. <coughs> um, Are you definitely, definitely, definitely measuring the food and hitting those macros perfectly? That would be my first question. Uh, The second one would be, yeah, I do think it's time to like give yourself a little, if you're not seeing a ton of progress and you've been consistent for six weeks or more, I think it's fine to lower your macros then and have that be a sign that because you're not losing weight, that's totally fine. If anything, man, you're doing this exactly how you're, like this, you're doing it exactly right by uh, hitting your macros and then being able to look into the mirror and being like, man, I've been at this for four to six weeks. It's not working. That does tell me that we need to drop down <coughs> calories, like your calories and macronutrients. So you begin to, to burn that body fat again. So my recommendation, man, would be to do like drop your calories by 200, take it off equally in terms of like fat, protein and carbs and start to go at that level for the next four to six weeks and see how your body changes. Thibo asks, how to take, how should I take care of my jump rope? Oil in the middle part of the handles, how do you prevent rust? That's a good question. I don't do anything to take care of my jump rope. I'm going to be honest. I like to keep it real. Yeah. So I don't have any recommendations about how to take care of it. Just don't leave it out in the rain. That's yeah. something I don't do. That's the best way to keep it from rusting. Mm-hmm. Um, besides that, just uh, store it in a dry place. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and I agree with Brandon. Like personally, I don't take care of it. Like I, I hang it. I hang it on the door. That's one thing I would recommend doing. Don't roll it up all the time. Hang it on your doors so the, the cable doesn't get all bent up. Uh, another thing I do is, no, sorry, I don't do that, anything else. That's all I do. I just hang it. Um, I noticed that on one of mine, the handles in there have started to get rusty. I might throw some WD-40 in there at some point. Like, it's the same way, it's the same thing I would do to my skateboard bearings. Like, it basically is a skateboard bearing in the crossroads. So, 
I would put some WD-40 on there just to ensure that it still spins fast. However, I haven't personally, and Brandon, it sounds like, is the same way. We haven't really needed to. Like, we, you know, we beat, we beat the shit out of those ropes. Like, we do a lot to those jump ropes, and we feel like they, they still operate pretty uh, pretty nice. So, if you want to put WD-40 on it, do that. However, it's not totally necessary. Hanging on a door. Leaf asks, good question, how often do the Zen dudes eat fast food and what type? Hmm. Fast food. <clears throat> you know what? I almost... I couldn't tell you the last time I ate fast food because every meal to me is like such a celebration of like, I'm like, ooh, I want to get something really good that usually that just doesn't fall under fast food. Now, some people might consider some food that I eat fast food that I wouldn't necessarily. Like, for example, I was in LA. I went and got tacos. Is that fast food? I don't know. They, it came out pretty fast. Not in my book, though. I hear you. Yeah, so I don't eat any, I just don't eat really chain restaurants, not to be like, you literally eat chain restaurants, but I just don't eat really from chain restaurants that would be considered fast food, because every place I go, there's just so many better food options, and I'm like, so I'm like the millennials to the max that like looks at Yelp and is like, alright, four and a half stars, let me look at the photos of this food, yeah, this is worth it, because I have one big meal today, let me make it worthwhile. Dude, so true. Honestly, I, I like I really do agree with you, man. It's not because I think like I, dude, I just have this when I when I think of fast food like Popeyes, like Burger King, McDonald's, like there's always just better options, dude. Like You're now, in New York right now, like I know. You could oh go get yourself a bagel and locks and dude, everything. No offense, like TGI Friday is totally a fine place to take your family or whatever, but like dude. People are eating at TGI Fridays in New York City. I walked by there and I was like, and it was like a bad looking TGI Fridays on the inside. I was like, guys, what are you doing? Like, if you want to go get a burger or a steak, like, Ugh. there's infinite number of places Ooh. in New York City to get, like, the best. Get the best. I don't understand this. But, yeah. Um, let's see. I guess for me, dude, the thing I eat the most fast food and I don't even know if this is considered fat. It kind of is, I guess. Technically, it's, it's lumped into this category. Chipotle. Chipotle is the thing I probably eat, like, on... A sometimes it's, like, four or five times a month, but on but sometimes it's one time a month. On average, I probably eat Chipotle, like, twice a month. And that would be the fast food I enjoy the most. Um, I'm not real big on, like... Yeah, like, I don't eat Pizza Hut, Domino's. I had it in Colombia, but, like... I don't really eat chain pizza. But you in NYC... I know. You, have you gone to Alberta's? No, or R Roberta's? No, uh, yeah, we did, but we only got a beer there. We just went to hang out. Because we got artichoke pizza. Do you know what that is? Uh, pizza with artichokes? Yeah, dude. It's like this creamy artichoke pizza. It's, it's oh. famous in New York. And then they have their pepperoni. It's stupid. It's stupid. I I can't. can't. I don't even I don't even start with me. All right. I'm really Next excited. Question. For Los Angeles. Ian asks, how long before Hollywood discovers you both and your movie careers begin? Can I get an autograph cross rope now? Thanks, uh -huh. Ian. Yeah, ah nice. ah um, yo, man. Honestly, Dan and I are, are going to go as far as you guys help us go. Basically, every, every person in this community who is doing a thing and taking action in their life, like, that expands this movement. And then because of that, Dan and I get more opportunities. So you guys keep doing the thing. We'll yeah. keep uh, getting bigger. Yeah, I don't know. Like, it's not a big goal. It's not like a major goal of mine. Like, I want to be a big actor in L.A. That honestly, it doesn't really sound super appealing to me to just be known as that. No. Um, but, dude, I'm totally open to, like, if, if we get to L.A. and, like, we make good videos and people think they're entertaining or whatever, like, I don't know where that could go. I'm willing yeah. to. I'm willing to see what could happen, um, but that was really nice to say that though. That was really nice, dude. Yeah, autograph cross rope. <clears throat> I'll, I'll give out some autograph cross. I was going to say like I'm happy to do that. That sounds super fun. Like, thank you. Yeah, but like, dude, being in LA for a little bit and like seeing that scene, it's just like, it's just such a grind to be an actor and like go pursue that stuff versus yeah. like just create a movement like we have which, like, ultimately fulfills us every day, and there's unlimited amount of, like, energy and love we can put into it, yeah. and it just grows by itself, versus, like, 
you're acting, you're just like kind of waiting. You're like, ah, someone want me to be in a movie or a show? Is there an audition for me to go on? That's true. And we're not really acting. Like we're just doing, we're just like, you know, we're so, we sort of play up these characters, which is fun. It just makes it fun for us, but it's already who we are. So it's like, we're being ourselves, but kind of pretending that we've been inserted into this like video game or movie. And yeah, if I was an actor, like I wouldn't, you have to like shop for like roles to think like, I don't know, maybe I wouldn't, I just want to play me. I want to play myself. So I think mm -hmm. that is a big factor, you know, when thinking about that. Straight up. Straight up. Straight up. Bergs. Tips, ideas, or advice on becoming a morning person. I need to get back to the habit of 5 a.m. workouts. Mm. What I said, and I'll just reiterate it, is I wouldn't force yourself to become a morning person. I would have a few like core rituals that you can stick to. Um, like mine would be, you know, drinking a lot of water and maybe doing a little bit of like a few minutes of meditation. Um, if you're showering, maybe do a cold shower. But outside of that, like if you don't feel like working out, just do it after work or at lunch instead. Because I'm just not someone who wants to make the things that I have to do any more difficult than they should be. And if I, if you can do it another time, why force yourself to do it at a time where you don't want to do it? Very true. But, um, I'm going to go ahead and agree with Brandon on that one. I think you covered that very well. Adrian asks, have you tried doing triple unders, Brandon? I have, and I've done them. I've done it, and uh, I should put a video on Instagram stories. Yep. Maybe I'll do one of those today. Same. I've done, like, one. I've never done, like, two triple unders in a row or consecutively, but I've done them just because someone has asked me to do it. Um, but not that much. Maybe, yeah, we should start doing that more. Yeah. You know? pull out, we can pull out the uh, speed rope. Probably do it a lot easier. Yeah. Raphael asks, pineapples or pizza? Dude, that's kind of actually a tough question. Hmm. How about pineapples on pizza? Oh, dude, I was thinking that. I was like, you're going to say that? Uh, no, I'm pizza for sure. Yeah, I think I'm pizza. I just love the idea of pineapple, like... If someone was like, what, what, you only have two foods to be, to eat the rest of your life to survive, I might actually pick pineapples because it should be healthy, like fruit, fries, uh, yeah. do my thing. But like pizza, if you're talking, we're just talking flavor, especially with the pizza I had the past two days. I'm going pizza here. Yeah. Also, you need to get more macros, you know, fat, carbs, a little protein. For sure. Uh, guess what, depends what kind of pizza, how much meat is on that pizza. Yeah. I don't know. All good questions. All good questions to consider. Christian asks, approximately how long will it take for a 20% body fat man to go down to about 8 to 10% with constant 16 to 8 fasting, staying in a caloric deficit, and about 30 minutes of cardio every day? That sounds like a great regimen. You're going to be doing the thing. Um, I don't think it's good to try to put timetables on these things, man, because what happens if, like, you don't hit it in that amount of time? Like, are you going to be super disappointed? Are you going to give up? Like, you're going to do the thing anyway, right? Like, it just sounds like you know exactly what to do, so you're going to do it anyway. So instead of thinking to yourself, like, okay, by, like, you know, August 31st, I'm going to have, like, this physique, just do the thing every day, and it'll take care of itself. You're going to be where you want to be. And it's a lot like that for, like, business and a lot of aspects of life where you're, like, okay, like, if I, like, take all these actions, is my business going to make this amount of money on this day? It's like, yeah, it probably will, but just do the thing every day and things take care of themselves. Agreed. And also, I mean, I actually was, like, 20% body fat and then went down. So, you know, I would expect, like, it depends on, first of all, Brandon's right. Like, everyone's body is going to be different. So, like, it would be illogical to expect it at a certain time and then be disappointed when it didn't happen because I can't give you a day that it would be like, okay, you can expect to be 8 to 10% on this day. Mm -hmm. um, having said that, for me personally, I went down, my last final 40-pound drop was like from 20% body fat to like 8% body fat. And that took me like four months, four or five months because I, I didn't go straight down. I kind of went, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like not, not totally linear, so... Just, just some thoughts, but don't put a timeline on it. Man. Franz asks, I, ha I, some, I have sometimes trouble eating as much as I should eat. I nearly always hit the protein, but most of the time have some fat or carbs left open. What is the point in eating more carbs and fat than I normally would just to hit the amount? Am I fine if I eat less? The point is your body is this mechanism. Think about your, your body like a car, right? 
and um, the car the carbs and fat and protein. Just think about it as like the uh, the oil you're putting in your car, the gas you're putting in your car, so you can run optimally. And if you don't have this sufficient amount of nutrients in your body, you're not going to be able to run optimally for as long as possible. You're going to run out of gas, have low, you know, and for the human, this just means you have less energy, uh, you know, your normal bodily functions maybe won't function as well as they would otherwise. You're not going to be able to maintain all the, the, the lean tissue in your body. So it's important that you eat enough food, you know, for your body for those reasons. Yeah, totally agree. And uh, it depends also, like, what your, what your goals are. Like, if you are, you know, it might not necessarily be, like, for example, if you're missing carbs and fat by a little bit, but your goal is to, like, lean down, it might not be that terrible to be in a little bit of a deficit there. But, yeah, you don't want to be eating so little because your body's not going to respond the way that you want it to. So I do think it's pretty important to get up to those amounts and also, like, just a tactic to get up to that point, if you can't eat 2,000 calories and you know you need to, you're only eating 1,500 a day, eat 1,600 a day for, like, four weeks and then move up to 1,700 a day and, like, let your body slowly get back into that rhythm where you can hit those calories and macros. That's, what I'm That's a good call. Yeah. Get, get as close as you can. The, the biggest thing is we don't, like, I got a, we got an Instagram message from someone the other day who is eating, he's like, I'm eating 600, 800 calories a day, and I'm losing all this weight, and I was like, holy shit, dude, that's really scary, stop that right now, because when you put your body in that big of a deficit, you're completely screwing with, like, your normal, like, bodily functions, and, like, it's just, your met metabolism is going to be so messed up, because it thinks it's in starvation mode, and so if you ever try to eat more in the future, that person was eating 600, 800 calories for a while, his body is going to say, okay, this is what I have to live off of. So when you eat 2,000, all that's going to be, you know, start to store as fat. It's just, it's bad. yeah, it's bad. For sure, for sure, for sure. I can't afford a new jump rope. If I just do body weight exercises from the app Freeletics Body Weight, will I see results or make progress until I can get a new rope? Um, you can't afford a rope because if you go, if you live in the U.S., I don't know where you live, but if you don't live in the U.S., apply this to whatever website or resources you have available to you but like you go to amazon you can get a rope for like four bucks like four dollars yeah so you can't afford a rope so i don't really want to play this game because like people who say i can't afford a jump rope to me like i'm going to be harsh and say like that's the kind of person who's an excuse maker because i know that like if you have access to the internet or like a smartphone like if you have that level of wealth you have four dollars to spend on a rope. Well, also, dude, like, seriously, ask yourself, like, what did you just buy for four bucks? Like, did you buy a a burger from McDonald's? Like, if you can buy a burger from McDonald's, like, you can buy a jump rope. It's Brandon's right. Like, they're super cheap online. So, um, having said that, so I would I would get a rope. But having said that, like, I've heard great things about the Freeletics app. I think it's great. And yeah, if you did, uh, you know, I think a lot of those. Like the Freeletics stuff is very similar to us, except we just have the jump rope component. So I mm -hmm. think that like, yeah, of course that could work. Just make sure that you maintain your, your calorie deficit and hitting those calories and macros. That's always going to be the biggest thing. Move your body. Estefanie asks, what do you think about doing one day workout and then one day rest? So rest, workout, rest, workout, well, you know. I think it's great if that's the regimen you want to get into and you're happy with the results you're seeing. Like... That's fine. Like, I used to be in that regimen, but now I'm a, a, a jump rope addict, so I can't go a day without it. Shoot. Addict. Shoot. Give me a jump rope. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, if you're working out, like, three to four times a week, like, that's fine. No, I think that's perfectly fine, especially if you're a beginner and you're just starting out. Like, yeah, I think that's totally fine. You want to ease into it because this is now a lifestyle. You're going to continue to do this forever, okay? Mm -hmm. So it has to be something that you can... Uh, you know, that you're going to do consistently, and the only way to get into those kind of habits is to slowly get into them. Slow, slow it on Slow that. Slow, smooth and slow. Chris asks, your house is burning down. What three things would you save? Not people. They can run out. So just things. <laughs> so easy. Dude, so easy. My phone, my computer, my jump rope. Bro, 
my backpack and my suitcase, which is filled with everything that I own <laughs> in the not world. Fair. That's it. Do Two that. things, bro. <laughs> that's what's sitting here. Come on. That's, that's not fair. You that can't, counts. It's, just, okay. it's a container with things in it. All right. Phone, wallet, computer. No. No. Oh, wallet. You get a wallet. No. Phone, wallet, camera. Uh. I don't need a computer. I can use my big ass phone. We have like a, a Mac computer now, bro. Shannon asks, thoughts on having apple cider vinegar? Um, I've read articles saying it's good for you in this way or another. Um, couldn't tell you, couldn't tell you 100%. Couldn't tell you, wouldn't say it's going to make or break you. But, um, you know, if you Google it, there's all these like benefits to eating, consuming apple cider vinegar. But I'm just not like, I'm not someone who researches homeopathic remedies. So I don't want to speak to something I'm not an expert in. Um, I think apple cider vinegar is good. I know vinegar is like good for your digestive system. I personally love apple cider vinegar uh, coleslaw. I don't know mm. the exact recipe, but I eat a lot of that. Like on a burger, forget mm. about it. Forget about it. It's so good. Yeah. It's, it's quite yummy. It's quite yummy. Whatever you see. I think, dude, I probably like wrote an article for some like – fitness blog about this in the past because you just research it like people say good stuff about it it's good for digestion yeah okay cool yeah. you know what's nice about being the jump rope guys is we don't have to be experts in apple cider vinegar we're that's just true. we we just jump rope that's true that is true that's so um, i like yeah man yeah man um chaitan asks how to keep lost weight away for good Mm. Stay consistent with doing the thing. Don't see what how you got there as something that was temporary. See it as something that's just part of your life forever. You do the thing forever now, my friend. You do it forever. If you could plug into the Matrix and learn one new skill, what would it be? Ooh. One new skill. I want can this be a broad skill? What if I could what if I could learn every language in the world at at once, just like plug in and boom, like I speak every language. Dude, That'd that is, cool. that is, uh, that's a good one. That's a good answer, dude. Because can you imagine like that. that? Being able to literally go anywhere and you can talk in fluent accent, like mm. to someone else, that would be Very insane, true. dude. <sighs> Kazakhstan, go to Beijing, go I, to Argentina. My first inclination was to say dance. But then I was thinking, actually, no, I would learn how to be like a crazy smart wizard with stocks so that I would always have, like I could work one hour a month and I would just always have a source of income for the rest of my life. Like I would never, then I could actually practice like dancing for the rest of my life because income would never be a thing. I'd just be a constant like millionaire because I'd be like Brad, uh, Coop, Bradley Cooper in mm -hmm. Limitless, just be like, ah, oh, shoot, dude, I need a million dollars. Da -da -da -da. I spend like an hour on the computer, bam, million dollars. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. So um, what we learned about Dan and myself is, you know, the most important thing to me is communicating with people, and the most important thing to Dan is money. You know, That's right, so, people. <laughs> I hope everyone... <laughs> That's right, people. <laughs> hey, dude, I would do good things with the money. I'm, I didn't say that. Like, money, you know me already, bro. Like, I would use the money for good things. I just want that you source would. of capital... To be able to do, like, I would still be shooting documentaries and going and saving the world, but I would have a line of capital to constantly be like, uh, we need $5 million for this video we want to make. Bam, 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 bam. Five million bucks. Cliff Wren asks, hey, dude. What's up, dude? Do you What's have up, advice to use or add ankle weights when jumping rope? Should they be adding ankle weights? You know, I actually was watching a, a pro boxer. I think his name is Andre Ward. Jumping rope with ankle weights the other day. Interesting. I watched it. Very cool. Um, so maybe that helps with his footwork. I think anytime you like have extra resistance on whatever you're doing, it can be helpful. But um, it's not necessary. You can always just increase your intensity. Um, and I'd be, I would say, if you're like a peak, if you're like a an athlete looking to really hit your peak levels of performance, like you you hit something like that, but like like. If you're an elder, like someone who's older, I wouldn't do that because it might be hard on your joints. So I think it depends where you are in life and like what your what your health is like. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, I would agree with that. I would agree with everything Brandon just said. 
Um, cool. Rajesh, how can we get rid of stretch marks? How do you do Coconut that? Coconut butter. Wait, really? Coconut butter. Yeah. I didn't know Coconut that. butter. Yeah. There you go, no, ladies and gentlemen. sorry. Cocoa butter. Cocoa, Cocoa butter. butter. I'm sorry. <coughs> Cocoa butter. Cocoa butter. Gotcha. Yeah, you pick it up at any grocery store. Uh, Cocoa butter. You rub it on your stretch marks. They go away. They just go away? Well, it depends how bad they are, right? I think if they're, like, not... If they're not super deep, then they'll probably go away. If they're super deep stretch marks, you know, like, if you gained a ton of weight or lost a bunch, then it may be more difficult. Um, yeah, that's... My thing is, like, dude, I wouldn't worry about, like... I don't... I, to answer your question, I feel like you would... If you have bad stretch marks, you might have to get them surgically removed. Like, I don't think you can just, like, really bad... Ob like, ones that have been there from lots of weight loss might just be there dude like i have stretch marks here in my arm from doing bench press like my whole life um, Gains. and like i wouldn't like that's gonna that's gonna stay there you know what i mean like for unless i had that like something removed also but i i wouldn't worry about it like stretch marks are a part of people like we're human beings like sometimes you have stretch marks sometimes you have parts of your body you don't like i would just implore you to love your body and not worry about the stretch marks oh uh, hallelujah Hallelujah. I'd like to uh, dedicate this podcast to uh, Crossrope. Oh, it's so nice of you. Um, Crossropes are the best jump ropes in the world. We love them and we use them yeah, because they're the best in the world. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And you get 10% off the agility rope, the one you see us using all of our videos, when you click the link in the description below. Yeah. So, uh, so. I recommend it. You're going to like the way you feel. I guarantee it. He, gar he guarantees it. I guarantee it. Um, I guarantee goddamn it. And now, what about our nutrition stuff? Dude, I, I forgot my green juice supplement. I forgot athletic green, so I haven't been drinking it. Mmm. Ah. Uh, well. Didn't you have some shipped to your parents' house? Yeah, but I didn't bring it on my tour. Ah. Uh, I forgot it on my tour, bro. You know? Whatever. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Well, if you guys want uh, a really high-quality green juice supplement... Uh, good grass-fed protein, BCAs, which I have and I'm taking right now because I'm fasted. Uh, we also linked you some bundles to Athletic Greens down in the description below. And it's just basically the three supplements that we take um, consistently. We don't take anything besides these. So if you're wondering, does Zen Dudes take supplements? Is there some like secret thing that we do? No, there's not. We just move our bodies. We jump rope. We eat the right amount of food for our bodies. And then occasionally we throw in these three supplements to help us either hit our micronutrients through the green juice, uh, maintain our muscle mass while we're fasted with the BCAs, or just hit our macros with the protein. So if you want those, down below. Agreed. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Ask the Zen Dudes. Brandon. Oh, wait. Damn. Got, before you leave. What, what? Tell them, tell them about, we got two upcoming meetups. Ah, Yes. Boston on Wednesday, this Wednesday. Meet me in Boston. It's going down. The Commons, Boston Commons. And I'm going to be in Portland, Oregon at the uh, Salmon Street Spring at 12 p.m. on Saturday. Nice. Very nice. So that's, uh, what is that? Uh, what day of the week? Uh, what is that? Uh, oh, that's, uh, for me, it's the 10th. For Dan, it's the 7th. Yep. 7th in Boston, 10th in uh, Portland. That's right. We're coming to you. We're going to hang out. We're going to give you bear hugs. Bear hugs. And cat hugs. And cat hugs. For sure. All right, Zendu Nation. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Ow.